Hi guys, this is Michael Belchitis, and in this video, I'm going to show you the compositing tag in Cinema 4D. Now you can see I have three objects set up in this scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the compositing tag to one of these objects. So let's go to object two. That's going to be this center blue object. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to Cinema 4D tags. And I'm going to come down here where it says compositing. And now I'll add in my compositing tag to this object. It's really a null everything within this object. So what I'm going to do is come down here into the attributes manager. And you can see we have a few tabs here that we can take a look at basic tag. We're going to be looking at tag and exclusion for this video. These are the main areas that you want to focus on. And so what we have here is a few different options that are checked and we want to go through each of these to show you which ones and how to use them and what's best to work with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a basic render. Now you can see that we have some shadows. We have some ambient occlusion for these little slots and in, in corners. And we have a reflection global illumination that goes on and reflects off of this object and onto this glossy surface that we have here. You can see the shadows in the background and we have a nice anti-aliasing across all of these objects. So I'm going to go and hide this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here and we have our object and we have cast shadows. So if I uncheck this and I do another render. So with that checkbox for cast shadow unchecked for this object, you can see that it doesn't have a shadow. All these other objects have the shadow, but this one doesn't. Now I know this might seem a little weird, but there's going to be different opportunities and, and uh, area scenarios that you're going to have to turn off a cast shadow for an object uh, might be interfering with something else in your scene. And there are going to be options for you to turn off that cast shadow. So let's go back to our settings here and we have our cast shadow. Now we have others where it has received shadows. That's something where if you have an object that is in front of the light and in a cast shadow onto your object, what it's going to do is it's going to receive that shadow. So let's go into my top view and let's pull this object in front. Let's go back to my perspective view and we'll go back to my tag here and you can see receive cast shadows. I'm going to uncheck that. And let's give this a render to our picture viewer. And you can see that it does not have the shadow. It comes all the way through, but doesn't catch the shadow on this object. So let's hide this. Now, let me go back to uh, receive shadows. Now we also have seen by camera. So what we can also do is we have our camera here. Now, if we turn off scene, uh, scene by camera, camera. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo so I can bring my object back to where it was. There we go. Where it was previously. And so what I'm going to do is uncheck scene by camera and we have all our other options back to its default. And let's do a render. Now you can see how it does not show up within our render. You can still see the cast shadow. You can still see all the other other objects, but this one particular object is not visible in the render. So we have that option, which is also very useful. Now we also have some options down here where it says force anti aliasing. Now I just want you to understand that when using this option, you'll have to use the standard render. So let's go to our settings here. You can see that I have in the standard render. Now, if I switch over to the physical render, you can see that this option now is grayed out is as we can do the, our physical render um, in terms of its uh, quality within this option panel within the render settings. So if I go back to standard, I'll be able to then use these options 
So for, say, for example, force anti-aliasing. So I'll go to my render settings, and I'm gonna come down here where it says anti-aliasing on the left-hand side, and we're gonna take a look at our anti-aliasing section here, and we'll go to best. Now it's important to go to best because we have this option that says use object properties. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this at a low level. We're gonna go minimum and maximum level. And let's come down here where it says force anti-aliasing. We'll have this checked and we're gonna keep this pretty high. We'll go four by four and uh, eight by eight for the max. Now, if I go to my render setting, or my picture viewer, excuse me, and we take a look at this render, now you can see that I have A set to where I have this force anti-aliasing unchecked. And if I look at the B, this is the one that has it checked. So, if I zoom in or if I take a look at this, you can see the A where it's checked and B unchecked. You can see where if I look at this reflection and I wanna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So I'm looking at this reflection, this orange reflection onto our object and you can see how the anti-aliasing affects this reflection. You can see at the top one how um, the quality isn't so great, but if we look at the bottom where we have it checked, uh, force anti and checked, you can see the better quality. So this is important to have whenever you're adjusting a specific object and you wanna make sure it has a good anti-aliasing, but you won't wanna affect the entire image. So let me go back to my original 100% and I will hide this. So now we have this other option here, it's matte object. So we're gonna have this at black and we're gonna go back to our render and we wanna make sure this is at uh, force anti aliasing and we'll uncheck that just so it uh, helps our speed with our render. And so if I render this object with the matte object on, now I have this rendered and you can see that this object is rendered completely black, matte black, the option, the color option that we chose here. Now the reason why you would wanna do this is if you're going to be bringing it into another program, it makes it easier to mask out this particular object. I can just go into Photoshop, use my wand selection, select this, and now I can either copy, paste, uh, I can reverse the selection to delete around that object. So it gives you a bunch of options that is real useful when you're doing any type of compositing in another program. Okay, so let's take a look at the exclusion tab. So if I'm looking at this object and we have this glossy object on our blue object here, and that's this one, so if I go to my object three, this orange object, you can see that we, what we'll have when we render is we have an orange reflection because we have this glossy material on this blue object. So what if I wanted to take that uh, reflection off of this object? That's where, this, uh, that's where the exclusion comes in on this tag. So you can see that we have a field here, we also have the mode we can use include or exclude, we're gonna keep it exclude for now. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to put another compositing tag on this object three. So I'm gonna to go to right click, Cinema 4D tags, and then we'll come down here where it says compositing. So now we'll take this object, because we're going to exclude from this field, so we'll click on our tag, on our object three, and we'll grab object two and drag it into this field. Now what we have here is a few different options. We have transparency, refraction, reflection, and our hierarchy. So whatever is within this object will be affected, or excluded, I should say. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our options just as is, as our default, and we're gonna to render to our picture viewer. Now you can see on this object, we don't have the orange reflection. As you can see on our previous uh, render, you can see that we have this orange reflection, but when we exclude that, it takes this off. Now this is useful for, you know, we can do that for reflections, but we can also do it for lights. We can do it for all kinds of different objects within our exclusion exclusion here. And we can also do that for include, because sometimes you might not want a light to reflect onto something, or maybe you do want it to reflect or pick up uh, that particular object, pick up the light from that particular object. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can download the project file from this course, as well as all the videos that I've made so far at astronomicskills.com. Thank you.